Hello and welcome to our lesson on intercepts and graphing. So we're going to continue our work on linear functions and what I would like to do is build your uh, strategies, build upon your strategies for graphing. So we talked about making a table of values. Now to build in the strategies first we need to know about something called intercepts. So intercepts are going to be points, which means we're looking at coordinates. So they're going to be points or coordinates where graphs of functions either touch or cross and to replace the two words we use the one word intercept. So the intercept means they touch or cross the axes that we see on the coordinate plane. So remember the axes that are on the coordinate plane include the x-axis which is the horizontal one that goes left to right and the y-axis which is the vertical which is running up and down. So specifically we have two types of intercepts then if there are two types of axes. Um, an x-intercept an x-intercept um, is going to be a point where your graph or function intercepts the x-axis and a uh, at every x-intercept something special happens. So for example, um, this is our x-axis here. It's the horizontal one that's running from left to right. We see a graph that is crossing the x-axis right here. That is where this function, the red one that is graphed here, this linear function, intercepts the x-axis. So this point right here at 10, 0 is called the x-intercept and we can just abbreviate x-int. Now if I drew another function and let's say it crossed the x-axis here, that coordinate would be 5, 0. If it was here, that would be 2, 0. If it was here, that would be negative 2, 0. If it was here, that would be negative 6, 0. No matter where your function intercepts the y-axis, all of them have something in common. And that is the y-value in the coordinate has to be 0, which is going to be helpful for us. Oops, let me not erase that. It's going to be helpful for us moving forward. Okay, So it's important to know that at every x-intercept, the y value in the coordinate is 0. The y value is 0. Okay, so an x-intercept is where a graph intercepts the x-axis. Now a y-intercept then is going to be a point where the graph of the function intercepts the y-axis. And again we see there's a red graph here, a linear function that is graphed and it is crossing the y-axis right here at this point. So this point is at 0, 5. So we didn't go left or right, we just went up 5 units. And so 0, 5 is going to be our y-intercept. And again, no matter where your function crosses the y-axis, let's say it crossed here, that would be 0, 0 if it crossed here. That would be 0, negative 3 if it crossed here. That would be 0, 9. Every single one of those points has an x value of 0. So if you're on the y-axis, then your coordinate will have an x value of 0. Again, important to know moving forward. So at every y-intercept, the x value in the coordinate is 0. Okay? So if we have an equation for our function versus a graph, so if I give you a graph and I say find the intercepts, that's not so bad. You're just going to locate the points where our graph intercepts the y-axis or the x-axis. Okay, so remember this one is the y-axis and this one is the x-axis. So just locating points on a graph, we've established that that's something we could do. Now if I give you the equation for the function instead of the graph for the function, while we could make the graph, we should also algebraically be able to find intercepts. So to find a y-intercept, we use the fact that the x value in the coordinate has to be 0. So to find a y-intercept, you're going to make x equals 0, and you're going to solve for the y value that's remaining. And to find an x-intercept, we're going to make y equal 0 and solve for the remaining value of x. Okay? For example, in number 1, let's say I want to find my x-intercept. Okay, I'm going to put the 0 in for y. At every x-intercept, the y value is 0. So if I replace y with 0, and then I have 3x plus 9 remaining, so this is my function. I'm just going to put 0 in for y and leave the rest. Okay, That leaves me an x value to solve for and that x value is going to be the place where my 
where this particular function crosses the x-axis. So to solve this, we're going to subtract 9 from both sides, and that makes negative 9 equals to 3x. Then we're going to divide both sides by 3, and that leaves us with x equal to negative 3. So we said that when y, y is 0, that's what we plugged in, we get an x value of 3. So negative 3, 0 is my x-intercept. Let me see if I can fit this in here a little bit better. So we have an x-intercept at negative 3, 0. Negative 3 for x, 0 for y. Okay, now let's find the y-intercept. To find the y-intercept, we know that every y-intercept x is equal to 0. So again, I'm going to take my function, but I'm going to replace x with 0 this time. So that's going to give me y equal to 3 times 0 plus 9. Well, 3 times 0 is 0, and 0 plus 9 is just 9. So when x equals 0, y equals 9 means my y-intercept would be at 0, 9. So those would be the two intercepts for that linear function. Okay, let's try that again. So let's say we're looking at number 2 and we want to find the x-intercept again. At an x-intercept, y has to equal 0. So if we put 0 in, 0 is going to equal 1 half x plus 5. Let's get rid of the plus 5 by subtracting that over. That cancels and leaves us negative 5 equal to 1 half x. And then we've got a couple of routes we can take here. Um, remember, we can look at this 1 half x as 1x being divided by 2. And so all we have to do to get x by itself is multiply by 2. Get rid of that division by 2. So if I multiply this side by 2, and multiply, which is 2 over 1, right? Sometimes it's easier to see it when you're dealing with diffractions. Multiply this side by 2, then we're going to have negative 10 equal to half of 2 is 1, so that's going to be 1x. Perfect. Which means x is negative 10, y is 0, negative 10, 0 is the coordinate for my x-intercept. Okay, let's try this with y. y-intercept. This time, y-intercept, we're going to put 0 in for x. So we have y equal to 1 half times 0 plus 5. Well, 1 half times 0 is just 0, and then 0 plus 5 is just 5. So when x equals 0, y equals 5 means this graph would intercept the y-axis at 0, 5. Okay, not so bad. And we've got one more here. Notice that the next one is in a different form. If you recall, these are in what we call slope-intercept form. That's where it's y equals mx plus b. So y is by itself. You have a number in front of x and then a constant. The next one we're going to look at here is in standard form, but that doesn't matter. We can do the same thing. We still know that at an x-intercept, y is 0. So if I put a 0 in for y, I'm going to have 4 times x plus 2 times 0 equal to 12. So 2 times 0 is just 0, so we're left with just 4x equals 12. So all I have to do to, do, uh, to solve here is to divide both sides by 4. And so x is going to equal 3. So x equals 3, y equals 0, the, the coordinate 3, 0 is my x-intercept. Now that one felt a little easier to find than the other x-intercepts. Let's look at the one last piece. Again, I need to try to scoot this over. I did not leave myself much room. You're probably finding the same situation. All right, y-intercept this time, again, is where x is going to equal 0. So 4 times 0 plus 2y equals 12. 4 times 0 is just 0. So all we're really solving is 2y equals 12. So divide both sides by 2. And we see that y has to equal 6. So x equals 0, y equals 6 is going to be the coordinate for our y-intercept, okay? Now, it seemed to be, on the first two that were in slope-intercept form, we had a little bit of work to do to find the x-intercept, although the y-intercept wasn't terrible, right? But if you notice on the third one that was in standard form, both intercepts were equally, in my opinion, equally easy, uh, or had an equal amount of work to solve. So the 0 
making one part of the function go away, and all we had to do was divide to find the other part, okay? So when we're adding to our strategies for graphing, what we looked at in the previous topic um, is we said that any linear function could be graphed if we knew two points. So if two of its um, coordinates or solutions or points, whatever you want to call them, um, if two of them were known, if you knew two points that were on the line, you could connect the two points to make the graph of the line. And we said a table of values could be used to organize those two points, which is still true. The difference here is, like we saw with the last two examples, when we're plugging in a value for x, okay, plugging in a value for x in our slope intercept form, that's really not bad because we don't have to do any solving for y. Y is already by itself. So plugging in a value for x made it really easy to find the value for y. But if we're in um, slope intercept form and I want to find, let's say, the x intercept, putting in the 0 for y made us have to do a little bit of work. So when I did this one, I had to do a little bit of work to try to figure that piece out. Whereas in the standard form, right, the 0 in for x or y was not so bad. All we had to do was divide to solve. And so what I would say is when a linear function is in slope-intercept form, that's where it's y equals mx plus b when the y is all by itself, it's going to be more efficient for us to pick values for x pick values for x and solve for the remaining y values. Now we could pick 0 for x, that's a nice one to plug in, but we can pick whatever we want for x and pick two values, any two values we want, find the y values and plot those two points to make the line when we're in slope intercept form. But when our linear function is in standard form, and the standard form is when you have the x and the y on the same side of the equation and the constant on the other side, that was the third one we looked at, it's going to be more efficient for us to find the intercepts, plugging the zeros in. So let's just try to look at the difference here, okay? So number four, again this is our slope-intercept form, so slope-intercept form, let me just try to coordinate here, slope-intercept form, that's this guy. All right, and actually I don't like the pink. Let me do something a little lighter. And all right, so slope intercept form, slope intercept form. When this is the case, I'm gonna use a table of values to organize. I'm gonna do this every time, okay? But what I want to do here is pick values for x. So I think plugging zero in for x is still kinda nice. If I put zero in for x, one fourth times 0 minus 1 means I don't have to solve for y, I just got to find the value that's left there. Like I don't have to do any, oops, where did my paper go? I don't have to do any solving for y. y is already by itself. I just got to figure out the value of what I have on the other side of the equal sign. So 1 fourth times 0 is 0, 0 minus 1 is going to be negative 1. So 0, negative 1 is going to be 1 coordinate. And then I need to pick another value for x because I need two points to make this line. And you can pick any value you want, but I would be strategic. Since we have to multiply x by a fourth, maybe we pick a number that's divisible by four, like maybe we pick eight, okay? If I put eight in, one fourth times eight, which is eight over one, is gonna be eight over four or two, and two minus one is one. So when I plug uh, 8 in, I get 1 back, okay? So now I have my two points, I'm going to plot those, 0, negative 1 is a point, and then 8, 0, negative 1, and then 8, positive 1 is a point, and now I'm going to use a straight edge here, and that was terrible. Try to connect these with a straight line, that's better. And there is the graph for our function, okay? When it's in slope-intercept form, Pick values for x, plug them in, find the y values. When it's in standard form, like the next one, so standard form is, let's see, green good? Yeah, standard form is what these two look like, okay? Those are standard form. It's going to be efficient for us to, again, organize into a table of values, but instead of picking x's or picking y's, we're going to specifically find the intercepts, which means we're going to put a 0 in for x, and we're going to put a 0 in for y, and see what happens. So when I put a 0 in for x, 
Okay, I'm going to highlight this again in a second. But if I put a 0 in for x, what's going to happen to that term is it goes away, right? 5 times 0 is 0, and all we have left to solve for is this piece. So when 0 goes in for x, we're just solving 3y equals 15, which means if we divide both sides by 3, that y has to equal 5. Really simple math. Most of you could probably do that in your head. Okay, and if you can, awesome. If not, that's okay. But let me just... I'm trying to help you a shortcut, okay? If not, put a 0 for x, and then 3y equals 15. So again, 5 times 0 is gone. So if 3y equals 15, then y is going to equal 5, okay? And hopefully you can do some of that in your head. And I'm not going to have space, so let me clear that out. Now, if I go to put the 0 in for, for y this time, if I put a 0 in for y, that term is going to go away. All I'm going to have left is the 5x and the equals 15. So when I'm doing this, I'm looking at 5x equals 15 and saying, oh, 15 divided by 5 means my graph has to cross the x-axis at 3. Okay, and so for those of you that need the work, 5 times 0 plus 3 times 0, or 5 times x plus 3 times 0 is going to equal 15, means 5x equals 15, and again, x equals 3. All right, so 3 is going to go, oops, that's my eraser, 3 is going to go here. And uh, maybe I can color code this better. Let's, yes, give me a second. You might, I don't know if you're going to want to mess with yours, but I'm going to, all right, I'm going to say when I put the 0 in for x, I'd be solving for 3y equals 15, which means y is going to equal 5. And when I put the 0 in for y, then I'm solving 5x equals 15, which means x has to equal 3. So now we can plot those two intercepts. We're crossing the, um, at the point 0, 5, that's on the y-axis, crossing the y-axis at 5. And the x-intercept is at 3, 0, so crossing the x-axis at 3. And then we can connect those two points to make our line. And not too shabby for my first try on that one. Okay, so there's that graph. And we're going to try that one more time. And again, try to do it in your head. I don't want to pressure you, but hopefully you're seeing this in your head. We're going to make a table of values. First, let's plug in a 0 for x. 0 for x makes this part go away. All we're left with is negative y equals 6. So if we divide that negative over, that means y has to equal negative 6. Okay, and then do this again. This time we're going to put a 0 in for y. If we put a 0 for y, this piece is going to go away, and we're just left with 2x equals 6, which means dividing by 2, x has to equal 3. And let me clean this up. Okay, so we're crossing the x-axis again at 3, and we're crossing the y-axis at negative 6, and now we have two points that we can connect to make our line. Terrible. Try again. Uh, one more time. That was worse. Oh my gosh. Okay. Nope. Just watch me struggle. Okay, I'm, I'm serious. One more time this time. That's good enough. Gonna go with it. I'm using a tool and it's just trying to approximate for all, and I can't stand it. It's sort of like way off on the pink one. <clears throat> Don't laugh at me. I can feel you laughing. Oh my gosh. Okay, that is tolerable. So I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> okay, so make a table of values where you pick your x's when it's in slope intercept form. When it's in standard form, make your table of values and find the intercepts, okay? So I want to show you, lastly here, a couple of special lines. We're going to end up with a special line when your equation um, contains only one variable. 
So for example, you see here y equals negative 4 and you see here x equals 5. So technically we're still going to call these linear because they have exponents of 1. If you remember that's what made them linear before, but normally it was the x and the y to the first power. If there's just one variable, what that means is that the value for that one variable is fixed. It can't change. Okay, so the result is going to be something special. Still going to be a line, you're going to see it. So let's say y equals negative 4. Let's look at this first example here, y equals negative 4. Let's say we wanted to make a, that's my highlighter, I'm going to make a table of values to graph this. Well, what we're saying here with this y equals negative 4 is that y equals negative 4 is the only y value there is for negative 4. y has to equal negative 4 no matter what. Okay, so y has to equal negative 4 no matter what. Doesn't matter what you put in for x. Do you see how there's no spot to put in an x value? That means every single x value, like 0 or 1 or 5 or 10 or 12, whatever you want to put over here, I'm just picking randomness, the corresponding y value will be negative 4. So I can do as many points as I want here. The y value is fixed. It's fixed at negative 4. And so if I make these points, what's going to happen? Well, let's say I plot 0, negative 4. And let's say I plot 5, negative 4. And let's say I plot 1, negative 4. And then negative 1, negative 4. No matter where I'm at, if the y value is fixed at 4, what kind of line are we making here? Some of you are like, it's a straight line. Well, these are all straight lines. I hear that one all the time, though. This straight line is horizontal. So a horizontal line is a result of a y equals equation when there's just y and a number and no x. Okay, so you could probably guess what's going to happen on the next one. Um, if we were to make a table of values to graph this, this time it's saying the x value is 5. No matter what, x has to equal 5. So I can make as many points as I want here with x equals 5. It doesn't matter what y is. y could be 0, it could be 6, it could be negative 2. The corresponding x value has to be 5. So if we go to graph this, point at 5, 0, point at 5, 6, point at 5, negative 2, it doesn't matter where we pick our y value. If x has to equal 5, when we connect these, what are we going to get? another straight line. Yeah, but this time it is a vertical line. So the result of an x equals equation, when it's x equals a number, okay, so x equals 5 or x equals 2, or there's no y. If it's a y equals and a number with no x, or an x equals a number with no y, you're either going to have a horizontal line or a vertical line. And I still like to make the table of values, just it helps me see it, right? If x is 5, make all your x is 5. Or if y is negative 4, make all your y's negative 4. And it doesn't matter what happens on the other side, just that that one value, that one variable has to be fixed. Okay? And the great news, remember, is we do have Desmos. So if we wanted to, if we were unsure on whether y equals negative 4 made a vertical or a horizontal line, we'll just put it in Desmos. Put in y equals negative 4, and you're going to see the same thing that we put on our paper. Or put in x equals 5, and you're going to see the same thing we put on our paper. Okay, and since we have Desmos out, let's go ahead and confirm what we did here. Um, let's see, y equals 1 fourth, and then out of the fraction there, put in x, and subtract 1, and we see the same picture. Okay, let's try this one. Let's just be extra safe. 5x plus 3y equals 15, and there's the same picture. And in fact, if you tap on the graph, it will even confirm the point at 0, 5 that we graphed and the point at 3, 0 that we graphed. And same thing with the last one. If we put in 2x minus y equals 6, we'll see the same graph that we have on our paper. And again, if we tap on the graph at the, at the uh, points where it's intercepting the axes, it will confirm that the x-intercepts 3 and that the y-intercepts negative 6. Okie dokie. I think that should be enough to get you going on your practice. Uh, but as always, if you find yourself needing some extra help, then feel free to reach out. All right, guys, take care.